Kenley Jansen added another solid year to his resume with the Atlanta Braves in 2022. But more than that, we watched the reemergence of one of the most dominant pitches in baseball from the past decade. Let's take a look at how this season came together for Jansen and how exactly he finished so strong. But before we can get into the details of 2022, we have to take a look back. Jansen has had an evolution of his delivery to the plate over the course of his career. He's not able to break down on his back leg as quickly or to the extent that he used to. You saw from 2013 to 2018, he moved much more slowly through his delivery. And here you can see from 2020 to 2022, he's just not able to drop down as much as he used to on that back leg. He's not able to drive home with the same force, although he is still getting very good extension. This has caused a couple of things. One of them is that he has a higher release point now than he used to, as you can see here. This looks to be a product of not being able to drop down as far on that back leg. The other thing that it's caused is diminished velocity. His cutter velocity in particular has dropped pretty steadily over the course of his career. As the pitch moves slower to the plate than it used to, it also has more drop. And with more time to break with the diminished velocity, it has more horizontal movement than it used to. Adding drop to this pitch is not necessarily a good thing. In fact, you usually want your cutter to have more rising action. And Jansen still has above average rise on his cutter. You can see here he's in the top right corner of the graph of average cutter movement across Major League Baseball. His pitch is truly unique as no other cutter has the combination of rise and horizontal break that his does. And if you know anything about Kenley Jansen, you know that he uses his cutter a lot. In fact, early in his career, he used it as high as 85 or 90% of the time. Since 2017, his usage has dropped. It's no surprise as hitters started to hit the cutter more around that time, which is around the same time that the velocity started to diminish. He has supplemented the pitch with sinkers over those years. Here's an overlay of the sinker and cutter. It's a pretty simple concept. The cutter breaks away from righties while the sinker does the opposite. Now let's take a closer look at his 2022 season. Over the first four months of the season, Jansen was doing pretty well, not quite up to his career averages, but having a good season. There were some ups and downs, but he was about to hit the worst stretch of his season at the very end of August and into the beginning of September. Within a stretch of seven appearances, there were four bad outings in particular that almost derailed Jansen's entire season. Starting with this one on August 27th, when he came in for a save opportunity, loaded the bases, and walked in the game-winning run in the bottom of the ninth inning. A few days later, in another save opportunity, he allowed this two-run home run against the Rockies. The Braves held on to the lead and were able to win the game, and Jansen even got the save. But it was another appearance where he was roughed up. A few days later again, he came in with a one-run lead, loaded the bases, and then allowed this sack fly. This tied the game, and fortunately the Braves were able to hold on and win, but it was yet another rough outing for Jansen. His season really hit its low point, though, on September 11th against the Mariners. With a one-run lead, he faced Julio Rodriguez to start the inning. He started him with a cutter, which Rodriguez did not offer at, which became a trend, as you'll see. The next pitch was a slider out of the zone, and then after that came another slider, which Rodriguez was waiting for and crushed. A couple of batters later, with a now tied game, Eugenio Suarez didn't offer at the first two pitches, which were both cutters. Like Rodriguez and many other hitters around this time, Suarez was waiting for a different pitch. As you can see, the swing and miss percentage against Jansen's sinker had really cratered in the month of July and August. Hitters were sitting on the sinker and waiting for it in the zone. They wouldn't swing at cutters unless they had to, and when they got the sinker they were waiting for, they were doing damage. As I said before, this was the low point in Jansen's season. It led people to write things like this. They were asking if Jansen should still be the closer for the Atlanta Braves. Some even went as far as to say that he might not belong on the playoff roster when the Braves eventually made it to the playoffs after the regular season. While these hot takes were obviously overreactions at the time, Jansen's numbers had taken a hit. His season averages, which were already not up to the standards he'd set over his career, had fallen even further behind. 
With the benefit of hindsight, we know that Jansen turned it around after this game and frankly dominated until the end of the season. Now, there were other factors that led to his success in the final three weeks. He was locating better and getting more swings and misses. But the most obvious and glaring change was that he returned to the cutter. And the results speak for themselves. In the final three weeks of the season, all of his stats looked more like the Kinley Jansen of old. Before the rough patch that we just looked at, Jansen was throwing his cutter 61% of the time, and he was using his sinker 25% of the time. After September 13th, he used his cutter 85% of the time, and he honestly looked a lot like the Kinley Jansen that we all remembered in Los Angeles. Going forward, in the last few years of Jansen's career, the question will be, is this an aberration? Are the final few weeks of 2022 just a flash in the pan, or is it a sign of what's to come? And will he use his cutter the way he used to earlier in his career? It's hard to argue with the results. The cutter still remains a dominant pitch.